Emmanuel, which means God is with us. 17th of December, Friday, third week of Advent Reflection. My dear friends, God wanted to be with us as a sign of victory. So in the salvation history we find how people were defeated. Sin crept into the life of man, this world, and they became mortal beings, those who were immortal, and devil became the enemy. So devil personified, the enemy personified in different tribes, governors, rules, kingdoms, which dominated the chosen people and killed them, persecuted them, exiled them. So these things denotes that they wanted a Messiah, a Messiah to save them, save them, redeem them from captivity. So they wanted a true, complete, perpetual kingdom where everyone is below them. They wanted that king to come. So that's exactly why the first reading. In those days, Jacob called his sons and said, Assemble and listen, O sons of Jacob. Because from Jacob's, the sons of Jacob's, 12 tribes were formed. So that 12 tribes were divided after King Solomon into two, southern and northern kingdom. So Judea and Samaria became the capitals. So Jerusalem was in the southern kingdom. So my dear friends, it's nobody united them, only David. That's why they, they expected Messiah to come from the David's clan generation. So the word says, assemble and listen, O sons of Jacob, listen to Israel, your father. Judah, your brothers shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. So catching the bull by the horn, completely the devil is in control. Devil has lost its control. And exactly why the word of God says, your father's son shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's cub. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down and crouches as a lion. And the lioness who dress rouse him. And scripture shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until tribute comes to him and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. So this completely powerful government, ruler, king, that lion has to come, the lion of Judah. My dear friends, they speak that those are the prophecies of Jesus. This is made complete, brought to completion with the life of Jesus. So we find how God intervened through human, human, human connection, genealogy. We find Jesus' genealogy today in the gospel. It's a long list though, my dear friends, starting the book of the general, book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, son of David, Son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Jacob. Isaac, the Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah, the father of Perez and Sarah and Tamar. So here, here lies the gradation, genealogy of the Lord. But then my dear friends, if you read carefully, it's a jumble of people. 14, 14, 14, three, three sets of 14 generations. So there are prostitutes there, pagans, sinners. So this is, this is exactly those who, people like David, murderer, 
and womanizer, Bathsheba, adulteress, and see, see how the genealogy was formed. So God stepped into our lives, my dear friends. Defeated, broken lives. He stepped in to be born so that the victory, we will have victory through him. It's important. My dear friends, he was born. He was born among us to be with us. So he mingled himself with our sin, our sinful nature, broken nature, to get, submerge himself down, drown into that muddy pit and take you higher. Raise you from that dirty, stinking sin, addiction. So here lies the genealogy. Finally he said, Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. So there's a, there's a, there's a clear shift. Normally, normally the husbands, men are important, it's a male dominant society. But when it comes to Mary, it was the husband of Mary of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. So, in fact, it's St. Joseph, his genes were never counted in incarnation. It's all according to the church, church teaching. It's from Mother Mary's ova, Jesus was found. Only with ova. No sperm was taken. So it's all, all the, the physical body was taken from the male, from Mary. So it's, it's, my dear friends, it's important that she got conceived with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus was born not by human intervention, no. Was born again in a way, because he was the Adam. My dear friends, so we are called, we are called to have Jesus in our past, broken, stainful, crushed, shattered past. So he comes to, he, he comes to the time and space to live with us, in us, to be with us. And so that he could raise us from that enslavement. He could, he can deliver us from our bondage. My dear friends, for that he was born by the Holy Spirit. So it's important that you are also be born with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's what we call born again. It's important that you focus your life there, my dear friends. So you, you can, I've seen your past can be a mess, a terrible mess, a jumble. You, have, you, may, you, may, have, you may have made blunders in your life, but then Jesus comes to your genealogy, your life, your past, so that you may be anointed. That's why he comes to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So with him, that transformation should happen. You should experience that power within yourself, my dear friends. The Lord is with you, Emmanuel. So that's the kerygma, that's the good news. So it's important. David, Babylon, 40 generation, and from the deparation of Babylon, the Christ, 14 generations. There are four sets of 14 generations. So he is the past, he is the present, and he is the future. So your life belongs to him. He has been, he has born in your life, got connected to your life, so that you can take the devil by its horn, complete control over the demon, evil forces. That should be your victory. You are called to live a holy life, a victorious life, my dear friends, with the in connection with your connection with the Lord. Amen. May God bless you.